A very good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime News on TV1. Bringing in the news, I'm John Fernando. Right before we move on to the news in details, let's take a quick look at your headlines. Army urges the public not to be deceived by rumours. Permission granted once again to dump solid waste at Arwakkalu. A committee appointed to study the salary anomalies of the railway department. Cattle and pro-independence demonstrators and riot police clash in Barcelona. In your lead story, the security forces call upon the public not to be deceived by rumours. Major General Sumit Tatapattu and Police Media Spokesperson Ruan Gunasekra expressed the following views. A luxury motor vehicle was stopped close to a school, close to a religious place in Matakulia. Due to a technical issue, the owner had left the vehicle there and left. The students and parents have suspected this vehicle parked in close proximity to the school. The police arrived at the school and carried out an inspection. The owner was also there. There is nothing suspicious there. Many false rumours were spread in this regard, so don't get deceived by them. There's a rumour going on in saying that uh, there are some parcels uh, in the areas of Modar, Matakulia and Gampa Milsat area. Uh, those are rumours we have sent our troops to search and uh, to do necessary inquiry. Now, cabinet approval has been granted to appoint a committee to transform the Department of Railways to a closed and an inclusive department and to study the proposals of the salary structure of the department. A senior official at the Ministry of Public Administration, Disaster Management and Livestock Development will be chairing the committee. Earlier, cabinet approval was granted to make the Department of Railways a closed and an inclusive department and to form a suitable salary structure to its official. The committee will implement the proposal made, reduce the practical issues that could emerge and to present the recommendations needed to implement those pro Now, in more local news, permission was granted to dispose Colombo's garbage to the Aruakaru Sanitary Landfill site once again. Gar Police and Western Development decided to suspend accepting Colombo's garbage at the Aruakaru Sanitary Landfill site after Colombo mayors made a comment to a newspaper referring to the site as a failed project. In more local news, an incident where millions of rupees were spent for the construction of a road but not completed was reported from Balangoda. The Balangoda Kanavina Road is used daily by the people of five Gramaseva divisions. Reconstruction of this road began in 2015, allocating a total sum of 56 million rupees. However, the residents in the area are facing great difficulties due to the failure in completing the construction. News first inquired from the chairman of the Imbulpe Pradeshya Sabha, Sri Lal Senarath, about this issue. <laughs> Actually, this construction did not begin during my tenure. In my knowledge, this road belongs to the Pradesh Sabha. This construction began without informing the Pradesh Sabha. Actually, it has been properly coordinated with the relevant places. But today, no one is taking the responsibility of this. Public money is wasted here. We request the responsible authorities to complete this road up to the proper standards. Now, taking a look at the news from the political arena, following views were expressed in the political arena about the upcoming presidential elections. <laughs> This time, ballot paper is 2 feet and 2 inches. It will be hard to find the flower bud symbol. Right on the top is the crow symbol. Swan symbol is similar to the crow symbol. First the crow and then the swan. 
There are various symbols, carom boards. The blackboard is Samaravira Veeravarana's party. Why did this ballot paper become so lengthy? It's simply to confuse those who are to vote for Gota Beraja Paksa. A ton of candidates were put forward for no reason. Actually, it's confusing. Being a lawyer, it's even confusing to me. They did everything that is possible to stop Gota Beraja Paksa from running for presidency. The panel who selected the Alpitya Aurudu Kumaria will not select Miss World. Similarly, the Alpitya Pradesh is by election. You cannot simply determine the percentages by only taking into consideration the Alpitya percentages. Basil Rajapaksa said at the Alpiti elections, if to win these elections, we have to have at least 75% of the Sinhala Buddhist vote. But actually, the percentage at Alpitya is 56%. The SLFP, UPFA contested. They obtained 12%. If we imagine that this 12% will also join them, such calculations can't be made. The only reason is even though the secretary signed agreements, the bottom layer haven't agreed. No matter what decision is made, let's stay united during this election. There is no fights for votes here. We need those who are willing to stand beside Gotabe Rajapaksa and not disrupt the elections campaign. People are confused as to whom to vote. Some candidates have not spoken about the policies for the country. We ask the candidates not to restrict these plans and policies to just papers. Present policies that are practical. Now taking a look at the weather, several areas in Madhuran Kulia Putlam have been inundated due to heavy rains. About 50 houses were flooded last night due to heavy rains in Pubudugama, Siripura and Mangalapur area in the Madurankulia 10th mile post area. Our correspondent said that by roads in the Madurankulia area too have been submerged. Meanwhile, several houses in Tanamalvila Hambegamu area have been submerged. The Hambegamu Reservoir has been overflowing since last night. According to the Met Department, the possibility of afternoon thunder showers is high over most parts of the island. Showers or thunder showers will occur over most parts of the island, particularly after 2 p.m. Heavy falls above 100 mm can be expected at some places in central, Sabaragamu, southern, northwestern, western and Uva provinces and in Anuradhapura, Vaunia and Mana districts. Now, further examination of evidence in the case filed against former Minister Basil Rajapaksa and three others for the criminal misappropriation of 2,991 million rupees from the Divinaguma Development Department was fixed for the 7th of November by Colombo High Court Judge Sashi Mahendran. The order was made as High Court Judge R. Guru Singer, who took up the case thus far, had taken a leave today. The Attorney General filed the case under five separate indictments for using 2,991 million rupees for the distribution of steel roofing sheets to the Vinagma beneficiaries. A professional discussion on creating a prosperous country was held in Mavatagama yesterday. The event named Mega Mines was held under the auspices of presidential candidate of the New Democratic Front, Sajid Premadasa. Several dignitaries, including ministers and experts, attended the event. Now, presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumuna, Gotabe Rajapaksa, met with tea factory owners in Colombo last evening. <laughs> The meeting was attended by tea factory owners and many professionals attached to it. Leader of the SLPP Mahind Rajapaksa also attended the event.